You've been a huge member of the XRP community for uh, quite some time now. Um, I mean, what, what's, what's your favourite part about the XRP community? That's a good question, Daz. I do like that we have diversity and we have a lot of um, smart people in the community. And I love that people um, share their knowledge, actually, um, and are willing to help other people. Uh, I also, I guess I also love that people are passionate about XRP. Uh, you know, that passion kind of translates and transfers to other people. So that that's energy. And I think, you know, there's people that are leaders in the community that um, keep it level-headed as well. So I kind of love all aspects. I am super excited to meet people in real life because um, I think, you know, that's an aspect that really creates a stronger community. 100%. I mean, you're talking about um, uh, people that you're going to meet there as well um, in, in real life. And, uh, I mean, if I, if I just may, I'll, I'll kind of run through the, the keynote speakers um, uh, that we have on um, at the conference. And, uh, I mean, we've got John Deaton. John Deaton was one of the first to, to come on um, as, as a keynote speaker. And I'm, I'm really excited to meet John. He's, he's been an amazing community member, kind of holding the fort down. Um, keeping everybody in check with uh, what's been going on uh, with the, the court case over the last month, three, three and a half years now. Um, John has just been relentlessly in the community. You know, we had the um, uh, the amicus brief that he he had, uh, um, thrown in there as well uh, to support um, seventy five thousand XRP holders, and uh, I know a good portion of, of that. Uh, I think it's about maybe ten percent or something. Um, of that were, were Australians, and, and that was quite surprising to find out. Um, so again, you know, it's just kind of, you know, everybody coming together to kind of, uh, you know, support uh, the efforts behind uh, <laughs> the, the very basic trying to attack us. Um, Jay, I don't, know, I don't know if anyone else is hearing this, but you're rugging a bit. Is, is anyone else hearing that? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's pretty glitchy for me as well. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you can move the spots. It's kind of a bit robotic. Yeah, so uh, we've got. Second, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back. Okay. So, yeah, so we've got um, John Deaton coming in now. You know, he's running for. Is it Senator? Like, uh, uh, sorry, I'm Australian, so I don't want to get it wrong. Um, yeah, so that that's pretty exciting um, to have John Deaton. But we have, we have a whole list of keynote speakers. It would be nice to have somebody so crypto friendly running uh, against her. <laughs> so push, yes. Um, Vet, welcome up to the stage. How are you? Hey, how are you all then? Uh, glad I'm, I'm here. A uh, really interesting topic, of course community and um yeah i think i think this is the f not the first time but probably the second time i'm on your guys wave of innovation show so yeah i definitely had to come and join yeah well welcome does i'm not sure where you're at oh you're back up awesome there he is yeah are you cool Dan? all right can mic you check that? mic check Oh, yes. yeah, that's much better. Oh, yeah. my dear. Oh, <laughs> it's typical I get rugged. <laughs> it's all coasting. Uh, it's always the way, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, how, how are we doing, Vet? How are you today? <laughs> you doing well? Hey, how are you doing, Dazzling? Yeah, uh, I'm good. Uh, glad you guys are hosting. So, you know, definitely had to chime in and see how you guys doing. For sure, for sure. And we got Wazza up here. Wazza, how are you, man? Has he got a, has Wazza got a mic? And it's, it's, look, this is an open forum today as well. So I want everybody to come up and uh, I want everybody to share their thoughts and their opinions on the XRP community. Um, you know, this is a, a community call uh, because this is, has, has been an amazing community effort to, to put this event together. I mean, you look at um, all these other events that we've had across the globe. 
And, um, you know, when everybody attends, you know, there's just this amazing amount of camaraderie that comes from, um, you know, everybody kind of getting together and, uh, it's, it's just such a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I'm a huge advocate for meeting people in, in real life because you, there's just so much more of a dynamic that you get when you meet people, um, you know, face to face, you get to shake their hand and you get to say g'day and, um, you know, you get to really break down all these barriers that you don't get with just kind of voiced, you know, um, a voice. I mean, you can even do Zooms, right? And you still, you don't get that, that full depth of, 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 you know, meeting someone. Um, and when you go, what, yeah, look, what, uh, one thing I've also noticed too, is that when you go to, uh, some of these events, uh, you know, you, you hook up with people directly. So, um, you know, you kind of expose, you know, who you are and, um, you break down those barriers and I feel like that opens up the opportunity to, you know, get employment and, you know, kind of make deals as well. Uh, and, you know, we're always looking for, you know, to excel ourselves in our careers and, uh, kind of push things forward. So, I mean, that, that's one of the, the best things I love about, you know, the community coming together at these events. Um, but, uh, that I might just jump to you and ask, you know, what, what's your favorite part about, uh, you know, uh, meeting up with, with people in real life? Yeah. So <laughs> it's a really good, good one, actually good topic. Um, it's definitely the connections that you make, right? The friendships, uh, the experiences that you have, the conversation is just on a different level and it's, it's just, you, you get a different relationship with people. You learn them from different aspects and it's just good to, good to see these people uh, that you spend so much time, you know, talking to, um, online primarily or even through zoom saying, um, but you know, expanding your network and having having just really deep conversations with people. We we have been always good experience having good experiences on all conferences, even very cross chain ones like East Denver is like second time we go there. Um, then you know, consensus of course. Like it, it's such a such a great thing to to be in, uh, in in these events because you get feedback, you get you see things from a different perspective. People learn about you, you learn about people, um, and and all of that. And of course, even the very XOPL or XOP heavy ones like um, Apex, for example, awesome events, uh, really really great. Um, you know, I yeah, I see Dennis down there. You know, I met Dennis and met XOP down there too, and they. I mean, they were really cool talking to them. I mean, so many, like Tiku from Japan, like a lot of people come from all around the world to, you know, have a good time together. And by the way, this is what I think I noticed with all events pretty much is the program really, I mean, it's nice to have a program or agenda, but for the most part, um, people just want to talk to each other. <laughs> they don't care that much about the agenda. Like you need the agenda to have something going right in case there, there is no conversation, but the, the people enjoyed the most the time where they just talk to each other in the lobby or somewhere outside, you know, the, um, the session rooms, um, having a drink together or whatever, going for lunch. This, this is where usually, you know, a lot of the, the quality, the good time, uh, people had yeah and we need more of them 100 percent. yeah man definitely i mean that was one of the um the things that we first started kind of thinking when when an event was kind of coming together we started thinking well you know because i've been to many of them as well and sometimes you can sit there and you know you, you're sitting in the one spot for really like a long time and you're, you're watching all these keynote speakers and um you know i, I know a, a lot more about what's going on in, in this uh in the in the crypto and blockchain space than maybe most people that might attend these events and so for me it's kind of like uh, i'd you know i i will sit and watch these these speakers but um you're right i want to get up and, and go mingle with people and you know have a chat in the hallways and things like that um and, and get to know people a little bit more but when I've sat there and, you know, in between speakers, you, you kind of, you, you talk to the person next to you and they're like, Oh, I'm just, you know, getting into crypto and I'm new. And, you know, they're like solely focused on like what, what people have been, you know, saying and what the, the talks are about. Um, I know I took my sister, uh, to, to an event and, um, I was at NFT Melbourne and, you know, I, I was sitting there and I, I knew everything that the guy was talking about. And, and she's just, I looked at her and, I'm like, yeah, okay. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm so into what he's talking about. I was like, oh, this is fantastic, right? <laughs> no too much about crypto. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things that, um, you know, we wanted to facilitate at this event as well. And that's kind of why we chose the Royal Pines Resort, because it's not it's not like a conference center where it's, you know, it's all kind of stiff and, you know, it's like you're businessy and stuff. Uh, it's a resort, right? This is where some people go to holiday. Um, and, and the Gold Coast is a place where all Australians go to holiday. Um, you know, it's a <laughs> year that your friend's taken off for the weekend to the Gold Coast. Like, oh, bugger, I wish I was going. But um, because it is a resort, it's, it's so much more laid back. And I mean, if you're staying there as well for the, the three days that the, the event is on, um, you know, you can, if, you know, if you're, you know, getting a little bored of a, a keynote speaker or something and, and uh, like the, the speakers that are up, I mean, I'm definitely not going to be getting bored, that's for sure. But if you want to go for a swim in the pool, like just to take the, the, you know, check the boardies on or whatever, go jump in the pool, right? Um, and then with, with a couple of people, like that's the kind of cool thing about this, this venue is, uh, it kind of just lets you let your hair down and, um, you know, relax a little bit more and, and kind of have those conversations. Um, so yeah. What I, what I really like, uh, at, at these, um, events as well is like, is everyone is equal, right? Because everyone is just, a, we're all humans and, um, there's nothing special about anyone when we are all together in, in one room or just walk in. Like I remember one like one uh, scene that was that was kinda expressing that very well. I, it, so at Apex after the after the after party, um, I was on my way to the to the to the bus station, right? And because uh, to take the bus back um, there was a shuttle back to the hotel and Dennis was there too, and then I saw David Schwartz with his wife, you know, like alone walking to, to the bus station as well. We were all were like sitting on the park bench kind of there and uh, waiting for the bus. <laughs> and it was like just, you know, just, just normal people sitting waiting for a bus, even though it's like all different people coming then there. And I mean, it's, it's so cool to see um, at, at these events that, you know, well, everyone is just similar very very similar and um no no one is uh kind of special um it it, it definitely take it definitely puts people closer together and this is what i really like it puts people closer together there is no barrier there is no oh how can i get in contact with this person or whatever it's this person just right in front of you just go and say hi <laughs> you know yeah 100 percent. i might just ask everyone um uh up here as well i mean well, what's what's kind of um, what's your favorite thing to do at, at these events? Is it um, you know sitting down and having dinner in the evenings, or is it uh, kind of you know getting your coffee in the morning and, and running into the to grab your seat at the front of the stage and, and to listen to the keynote speakers? Um, do you like going around and talking to people that have, have got exhibitor stands, um, or you know like what, what's your favorite part about these events? For me personally, if, if I if I can say, is um, the sessions. Like I watched all sessions at Apex uh, from the morning till afternoon because uh, I wanted to take as much as I can with me uh, from what people are saying and and all this. Even though it's recorded, I know, but still, you know, having qu having you know questions, follow up, all that. So all all events uh, or all sessions that I could attend had for me um, the priority, highest priority, and. Um, yeah, then, then everything else comes after that. <laughs> 100%. We'll go to Shellfish and then we'll go to uh, Crypto Queen. I want, I want to get your takes as well and then we'll jump over to uh, Blockchain back up. I, I want to know what people are going to do when they go over there because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be spending more than like the two or three days because it's, I mean, I'm from the US, like East Coast. So um, I would think most people are going to go over there for like a week because it's a good day of traveling. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going this time, but <laughs> what, what is there to do, uh, in that area, um, to entertain them while they're there? I, I know you said that there's a beach nearby, um, but what else do the locals do? Wow. That, that is a fantastic question. Cause, uh, I think that most people from outside of Australia probably think, well, you know, well, like what does Australia got? You know, is it just kind of kangaroos and maybe some red desert? <laughs> but the thing is that like, this is what I was saying before about the Gold Coast, you know, why Australians love to go there because it is that holiday destination. Um, you've kind of, you've got that warm tropical climate. Um, you know, you've got the beaches, the surf that everybody loves. Um, you know, the nightlife is amazing. You've got the city and the skyscrapers running all the way along the beach there. 
um, you know, palm trees. It's just beautiful, tropical paradise, right? Uh, but not only that, you've got all the theme parks as well. Um, and and the, a lot of the, the families like to go to and you've got all the rides and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, you know, you've got the, uh, I, I forget, sorry, uh, which zoo it is called, but you've got the uh, um, uh, Australian Zoo up that way as well. So if you want to go suss out all the uh, amazing, cute, um, and also scary uh, animals that we have here <laughs> uh, in cages, you know, contained. So, you know, we're not getting... <laughs> okay, I have to throw it out. I have to throw it out. I'm like obsessed with like sloths and koalas. You should totally like hit them up and see if there's any way that they could bring a koala over because I know I'm, I would not be the only one that would want to pet or hold a koala. Like, ha- <laughs> okay, I, I, can just... I, can't, I can't be the only one that wants to hold a koala. Totally. I actually see that. That's, uh, I know Ali's listening right now. So, uh, Ali, you want to hit up the, uh, the zoo and see if they want to whip one over and um, uh, bring, a, bring a koala over for everybody. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> but, no, the Gold Coast has, has so much to offer, um, you know, in, in regards to, um, you know, uh, you know that kind of you know, that holiday mode type of vibe. Um, so, you know, there's definitely plenty to do. We're, we're, we're constantly putting tweets out as well of, uh, you know, the different activities that you can uh, get involved with up on the Gold Coast. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really nice place. I've been up there um, only three or no, four times now. And I'm kind of thinking I might, because I'm, I'm down in Melbourne, if anyone didn't know. And I'm thinking about moving up that way because it, it is a really nice place to be. But, um, Queen, what are you, what are you thinking? Um, you know, what, what's your kind of favourite part about these events? Well, for those that to speak to Shellfish's question about what do people do, so, yeah, you've got the theme parks. There's lots of things that you can do to connect to nature and they're the kinds of things that I love to do. So, like, you can do a trip to Morton Island. You can kayak and snorkel um, at certain times of the year and I'm not sure if it's going to be in March. You can actually um, snorkel with the turtles. Um, I'm not sure if there's any dolphins at this time time of year i've seen whales um on the gold coast before as well you can go like to rainbow beach which is really beautiful or you could even take a day trip down i think it's like 45 minutes to an hour down to byron bay and that's really beautiful place there's the lighthouse down at byron bay so that's kind of like a day trip for anyone that's um staying longer but i guess it's really what you want to get out of your trip there other than the um, actual XRP Gold Coast event. But, you know, waterfalls, rainforests, kayaking, um, there's lots of, you know, tropical, beautiful things to do. It's warm. It's not like you're going to be getting into cold water. (laughs) So, yeah. um, Well, it all sounds really lovely. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next year, Shellfish. 100%. 100%. Oh, like it, it, this, and that's the thing too. It's, this is not um, just a 2024 event. This is um, this, this is a long-term thing. Um, yeah, there will be a 2025 um, XRP Gold Coast event. Uh, I, I think this is, um, you know, turning out to be something quite amazing. Um, but, I mean, we do have um, on stage a very special guest uh, who is a keynote speaker uh, at the XRP Gold Coast 2024 conference. And I want to welcome... Uh, Mr. Blockchain backer on stage. How you doing, mate? What's up, man? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Up, yeah, you, yeah, you were mentioning you're, you know, you were kind of going around the panel asking people what's their favorite thing about these conferences, right? And so uh, I've, you know, I've actually only been to a couple. I've, I've been to uh, Consensus and I've been to XRP Las Vegas, and so I've kind of gotten that ex- experience of going to that and. It's real ironic. <laughs> I'm a speaker. I'm going to be delivering stuff, but that's like definitely not my favorite part of uh, conferences. Is the you know the information <laughs> like I'm just I get bored, you know, because <laughs> it there it just happens unless the topic is really engaging. But that's not the case for ever everybody. There's other stuff that just the, the whole audience is just packed and people are loving it and eating it up. I'm like, okay, cool, man. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm going to be delivering a bunch of data, just research that I've done. Uh, throughout 2023 and into 2024. So I'm just going to be kind of uh, giving a lot of the historical behavior of the market uh, kind of a presentation. Um, but the the reality of it is like, what's my favorite part? And so like, let's just go from my own experiences of being there. Like 
the conference and sitting there and watching people and stuff. Unless it's like somebody like, like I'm real passionate to see. I'm like, oh, that's okay. But like, it's really usually going to be the things you have no idea. Of, like you just have no idea. Like you're going to like meet some people that like get along with really well. And then you're going to go end up and do some fun activity together, or you're going to hang out and you're just going to be friends. Um, because I, I'm assuming it is probably like this for most people. And it, it is like this for me is that in my personal life, like in the regular world that I live in, um, I, I don't have a lot of crypto friends. Like I don't have really any at all. Like there's no one that I can like go like, Hey dude, let's go hang out and talk about XRP and Bitcoin and, and all that stuff. There's like nobody. Right. Um, and then, you know, then you get this other world on Twitter where you kind of see like a mix of everything. Like you got people who are passionate about it, but then you got a bunch of people who are like toxic and then you got people who get in arguments, everything like that. But when like you show up to these conferences and stuff, these are all like the passionate people. These are all like the cool people. These are all the people who are like excited about it and they all show up to it and they're there totally to have a good time. And they're there to like nerd out on information and nerd out on talking about the same stuff because it's like your hobby practically, right? And like, it's the thing that you're passionate about and you don't really have that to share. You can't like call up your buddy and say, hey, let's go play golf, right? Like there's just not that many opportunities to hang out with a bunch of people that are like, or call up and go to, join into a, like a collector's coins club and go meet every week on a Wednesday and hang out with all your other nerds who like collecting, you know, precious metal coins or something like that. Like, this is kind of that one opportunity where like you go hang out with your club of all the same people who are like passionate about the same thing. So everybody's kind of got that same attitude that is there where like everybody's just like, I can't believe I'm here. This is so cool. I nerd out about this stuff on the internet all the time. And now I'm here in real life with everybody else. And so everybody's kind of in just a good mood. And like, not only that, but like many of us like just been here for years, right? The, the good times and the bad, like the crazy emotional times we've all gone through. All of us have gone through that same journey together. So we all have like a little bit of street cred and respect for each other who are there. Um, and that just little camaraderie that happens at those events when you're with that specific group of people makes it just more fun. And like, it may get weird, man, <laughs> being at a resort <laughs> with a bunch of crypto people. It may get crazy. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but you know, when I look back on it, the thing that I, you know, like when I went to XRP Las Vegas in specifically, right. So that was like real XRP centric, right. Like, uh, it was just really awesome to be surrounded by all those same people that are like you and, and you know, you there, if it's a resort or something, there's going to be just endless things to do. And the thing that you're gonna find, like the thing that you're looking forward to, like having your bucket list, you're probably your favorite moment that you have there is probably not even something you're thinking about right now. It's just going to organically randomly happen. Um, and that's what's, that's what's cool. And that's why I really like going to these things, but you know, I'm, I'm just speaking saying, too. So if you want to sit down I and watch something, I'll be talking. <laughs> you know? I, say, I think it, it was yeah. funny because I went to a uh, convention not long ago and uh, it was a Michael Saylor was speaking and uh, that, uh, the, where all the um, exhibitors were, that room just completely emptied out. Everyone ran straight to the theater to, to listen to him speak. And um, I just kind of watched everyone go. I, I personally, um, uh, you know, I was, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity to go speak to all the people I wanted to in the exhibitors area. <laughs> so I, I focused on that. <laughs> um, but uh, I can see you doing the same thing as soon as you get up there. I was going to run in straight for their seats and grab that. Uh, that, that uh, yeah, we'll run see. Run we'll sure. see. But um, I mean, I, I want to take a, a chance as well to kind of, you know, run, run through the program and, and kind of what we're offering as well. Um, over the um, the three days, because on, on the Friday, you know, we're, we're starting it off with a kind of a, a welcome party by the poolside. Um, so we're going to have, um, you know, a bit of music going on and, and just kind of a, a relaxed, you know, evening for, for everybody, um, you know, to kind of get together and, and, you know, break the ice in a way and, and say good day to each other. Um, because, you know, the, the next two days will be quite busy. It's, it's really nice to just kind of break down those barriers. And, and then so, um, when you, when you kind of run into, you know, all, all the, the chaos that's going to unfold on the Saturday and Sunday, uh, you know, you, you'd be like, Oh, yeah, I saw you last night. You know, and if you get a little bit draggy, like, Oh, you see that guy who's like, you know, doing his thing or <laughs> whatever. Um, but, you know, we're going to have, uh, Chip and Jeff kind of, you know, running a, a speech on that. So we have Chip and Jeff as the MCs, uh, for the, for the entire event. 
So um, uh, they're going to be flying in, and I'm absolutely stoked to, to uh, have both of them coming along. Um, they're, they're absolutely amazing community members, and um, you know they've been supporting the community uh, and education uh, and, and information uh, with On The Chain for a really long time now. So I'm very, very uh, humbled to be having them coming along. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of Friday. And then, look, Saturday, um, oh, sorry, also we're having uh, XRP Bags is performing at the poolside party. So that's going to be really, really fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but on the Saturday, I mean, we've got uh, an, an array of, of keynote speakers running. So um, we've got the um, uh, the mayor of, of the Gold Coast. He, he's opening up the uh, main stage. Um, and then, you know, we've got Chip and Jeff. We've got Scott Chamberlain opening up the Codathon. Um, so for all you developers that are interested in uh, um, participating in that Codathon, uh, that's going to be a live streamed event as well. So, in fact, the entire conference is a live streamed event, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, so for all the developers that are, are keen on um, participating in the Codathon, um, Scott Chamberlain from Evernode will be um, uh, up and running, running that. The prize pool for the Codathon is. 300,000 Zahao tokens and 30,000 Evers. And I believe at current market value, that's around about 45,000 US dollars for that prize pool. So um, uh, definitely stay tuned and follow Evernote for, for more information on that. Um, but as we go through the day, we've got uh, Dr. Maria Poinka. Um, she works in the universities here in Australia. Uh, we've got Dirk, we've got Crypto Erie doing an AMA, uh, Bill Morgan. Uh, who we've got it here up on stage as well. John Deaton as well. So um, that'll be kind of fun to uh, have the lawyers uh, up there. Uh, we've got Aaron McDonald as well, Neil Smith from Ripple, Josh Kim uh, from XRP or Korea, Shen from Zerfon will be on on Saturday too. Uh, Chip and Jeff doing a QA and a panel. We've got Jerome from Immersive, uh, Jeff Moy from Moy Finance, um, Jay, Jay Camber from Spend the Bits. Um, and we've got one, one spot at the end of the day there we get to fill. So, uh, but on, at the end of the day on Saturday, um, we've got a, a nice little cocktail, um, you know, reception there in the hydrate bar. So, um, I, I think that'll be really amazing as well. But on Sunday, um, we've got the builder series. So Crypto Erie has brought together a bunch of amazing builders from all corners of the XRPL ecosystem. Uh, and, and blockchain ecosystem to kind of you know, shine a light on, on those those builders that are um, you know just relentlessly building away uh, with this with this technology in the background. So it'll be a, a nice event, the builder series, to kind of highlight what these um, uh, builders are uh, kind of building at the moment. And then um, after that, we've got Ross Edwards. Um, he's from Ripple as well. Uh, Matt Donovan um, covering tokenization. And uh, Dr. Maria Poinker again uh, doing a, a, a Q and A. Uh, Bearable Bull um, can't forget him as well, so he'll be there on on, on Sunday. Um, and then we've got Sadaf doing some market strategies. Uh, Chip and Jeff with the Q and A also. Scott Chamberlain um, he'll be after that uh, closing up the Codathon. And um, uh, then we've got John Deaton up there as well with Brass Knuckle Books, the publishing company. Uh, that uh, helped put his uh, his book there, Food Scent Warrior, together. So, um, but after all of that, because I know that is just jam packed with so much information um, and and so much going on there, everybody can go to their rooms or wherever they're going to go and get themselves ready for the after party on the Sunday night. So, uh, where we're going to have XRP bags performing. So, it's going to be just be an absolutely jammed packed massive conference and i'm so excited for it but uh we've got bill bill bill's come up on stage how you doing bill yeah hi hi Daz. how are you hello everybody hi there bill how you doing great 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 having these um spaces on saturday morning so many of the really good interesting ones that people in the u.s run are about 3 a.m my time so um Daz makes those ones by the way but it's a bit too much for me but um uh, look Daz, i think is it not the case, too, that we've got more than one DJ at the um, after party in the Saturday night event? Uh, we do have a DJ, and I'm going to go and find his name, but I did hear that he 
has been on, I believe it was Australian Idol. Um, and so he is in, uh, I saw the, the promo video for him the other day and, um, we're, we're very lucky to, to have him on board. So, um, I've been watching the kind of, you know, selection of music that, um, you know, XRP bags and his crew have been putting together, um, and working with the DJ, uh, to kind of bring, uh, you know, a, an amazing entertainment package for all three nights as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the song list come together and it's, uh, definitely, um, uh, a list that I think is going to get everyone kind of in the mood to, to party. So, um, that's going to be really, really cool. I want to point out too, I had a, an, um, an amazing community member cause that's kind of what we're doing today. We're just focusing on, on the XRP community and just everybody coming together to kind of put these, these events, um, you know, together and, and, and just kind of support each other. But I had a, um, I had a DM from a lovely community member. Uh, most of you uh, might know of her. Her name is Annie Ways, and, um, she, she's been an amazing community member, kind of there for everybody along the way. And, um, you know, she sent me a DM a little earlier and, and, and wanted me to point out that, um, uh, if you are flying in to Australia to get your visa sorted as soon as possible, because we have only got five weeks until this event um, happens. So uh, if you are going to be flying in, make sure that you, you get all your, your paperwork sorted because uh, it, it'd be just such a shame to see you know, land over here and then all of a sudden, you know, something happens and you, you couldn't get in and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely, um, uh, make sure you, you get everything sorted. But, um, Bill, I want to ask you as well, cause, cause you've come up what's, um, cause I'm just asking everybody today, what's your, what's your favorite, um, part about, uh, you know, these, these events coming together? Well, I think, I think there's two things. One is the, the great content, um, which has been assembled by the wave of innovation team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who just likes to soak up information. I think you're the same, Daz. Um, and the other thing is just meeting people. So many people that are coming that I've um, shared posts with on um, X and um, or looked at their YouTube um, content. I think to meet those people, it's just a great thing. And to meet them in a social context as well. And the nighttime events like... I remember when I was a, a little boy once, I watched this movie called Poseidon Adventure and it had a had a sort of theme song in it, there's got to be a morning after. And I'm just wondering, what's the morning after on Monday? After all this excitement, I've got to go back to the office and work. Oh, you know, it's just going to it's just gonna be extraordinary sort of 72-hour period, um, which uh, I think you're just meeting people and soaking up all that content is just going to make it worthwhile. And I, th I think it's, it's good too for people who can't make it that they've the Wave of Innovation is offering the virtual ticket um, so that there is that live access to all that content. Um, you know, even if you feel it's not as quite the same thing as being there, you sort of, you can be there um, and listen to all that um, content live. I think that's a, a great additional feature at a very low cost that, that Wave of Innovation has offered. 100%. And let's not forget that uh, we've got Merlin um uh, the app the crypto tracking application that is sponsoring that virtual ticket so um merlin have got a, a fantastic application there um web application where you can track all your crypto uh i know that they've got um uh, uh the ability for you to kind of you know tra track your your trades as well so you know if you, if, you, if the, the market starts moving which it has um, recently, which is kind of exciting. Uh, I think it's getting around a little bit giddy. <laughs> so, um, you know, it'll keep you up to date on, on all those alerts. And um, uh, so, so make sure you head over to, to uh, CryptoMerlin.com and, um, yeah, definitely sunset the application. I think it's a, definitely a good one to, to keep in uh, uh, track of, of all your holdings. But um, uh, I want to welcome BDF Coach up to the stage here. BDF Coach, you, you've been really good. Um, with the community kind of hosting uh, some spaces and, and uh, kind of bringing everyone together. And, and that's kind of what we're focusing uh, on today here is, is the community. So um, I want to say good day to you, man, and, and um, how you doing? You're doing great, man. Thank you so much. Man. You, you do me so much kindness. So first of all, just congratulations to everybody that is involved in attending this uh, conference. It sounds like it's going to be once in a lifetime event like that's super dope so shout out to everybody who is involved and everybody's attending i'm so happy for everybody that's gonna take it, uh, a chance at this experience it sounds amazing i wish i could be there but i can't unfortunately 
Um, but actually, blockchain uh, just actually answered one of my questions. So I, I will enhance my question by asking, since there is this virtual ticket, because my question was if there was going to be like um, a live stream or even like YouTube or Twitter. Uh, so can you just tell me more about the virtual ticket? Because like I am interested, you know, to, just to tune in here and there to see how everybody's having a blast. 100%. So basically, um, with the virtual ticket, um, what you're going to be able to do is get access to all the keynote speakers that will be at the event. Um, so, I mean, running through the program before, you can kind of see that, uh, that, that there's an amazing lineup uh, through, throughout the program. So that, that will be live streamed. Um, Crypto Erie, um, who, who's on the, the, the board of Wave of Innovation, who has also been an amazing um uh part of, of putting this this event together uh she was on um uh, with merlin in the, the the good morning crypto show uh a few hours ago and uh johnny there on the on the show because i had watched a, a clip of it uh johnny had mentioned that if uh you were buying the virtual ticket i'm pretty sure don't correct me on my math here but uh it worked out to be i think it was five dollars per speaker Okay, if you were to watch all of them, right, by grabbing the virtual ticket. So, um, I mean, for the, the, the quality lineup of speakers that we have at this event, I, I think that's pretty good. But um, not only that, um, when, you're, when you're buying this virtual ticket, uh, you are also uh, contributing to, the, uh, to our grants program. Uh, so any, any profits that we, we make from this event will go straight back to the community through grants, so our grants program. Um, and I know Bill, Bill helped kind of, you know, put all that together and, um, Bill, do you, do you want to, um, if you don't mind kind of running over, um, the grants program that we have and, um, uh, what we're offering there? Okay, Daz, um, the, the sort of procedures and rules for the grant program have still been worked out, but they'll be, they'll be done by the time the event happens and it'll be a completely... Um, objective decision by independent people about who who wins a, a grant. So people have to put their hand up for a grant. Um, secondly, the um, the extent of the grant program depends on um, the profitability of the event because that's the source of income for the event. So all the um, proceeds um, that are in profit for the event don't get distributed to anyone, to any members. The people who are putting the event together, the Wave of Innovation, including Daz, are all volunteers. So they don't get anything out of it. The profits get sort of reinvested into the not-for-profit purpose of Wave of Innovation Limited, which is a not-for-profit public company. And um, those purposes include holding more events in the future and running a grants program. And that grants program is targeted for people who are developing on the XRP ledger or the side change. So it includes Zahao and Evernote, anything that's a side chain to the um, XRPL. Developers that are, are working on projects on those side chains are also eligible to apply for a grant. So, Daz, I, I just have, I'm just walking somewhere, so I'm a little bit out of breath, but um, that's basically the summary at this stage, and we'll be able to update with more information closer to the event. 100%. Thanks so much, Bill. I mean, yeah, what, I, I can't think of a, a, a better way to try and, you know, give back to, to all the builders that have been relentlessly um, and putting together... Um, their, their talents to kind of build all these applications that, that we get to use every day. Um, yeah. there's, a pre there's a premise behind all this, Daz, as you know, and I know that yeah, you and Crypto Airy very much believe in this and everyone on the Wave of Innovation team, and that is that there needs to be more development on the XRPL. And the more development there is and the more that leads to demand for XRP, which is, is good ultimately for the value of XRP and for the ecosystem. 100% couldn't agree more. Um, and that's kind of a, a, an interesting take there, Bill, because I kind of want to uh, leave it 
it's more towards um, that that price action that we've been seeing lately. And um, I know we've got two two um, uh, TA advisors up here as well um, that, that give us uh, amazing insights into kind of what the market is doing, uh, which, which drives a lot of that community sentiment. Uh, you know, and, and <laughs> as we can see here in these spaces, uh, you know, it runs a lot of the, uh, the emotional kind of feelings that everyone's kind of going through. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of keen to, to get a good take on, on how the market's kind of, um, you know, affecting everybody uh, at the moment. And um, I, I'll go to Lip first and I want to say, G'day Lip, how, how are you doing? And um, yeah, well, what, what do you feel about how the market's making everybody feel at the moment? Hey, Dazzling, hey, everybody. Thanks for calling me up, Dazzling. I appreciate that. Uh, it was with the comment that y'all said about building on the XRPL, my favorite topic. So uh, when Blockchain Backer was talking about, like, what's the problem? Why don't we get a lot of development and stuff? I feel like that was a good niche to, like, really hit. And then I feel like it's wrong of us to expect Ripple to build software for us. That's our job. That's why it's open source. So if somebody want to make a wallet with more applications so you can borrow against your XRP or whatever application, then that's the developer's jobs that are freelancers. It's not Ripple's job. So I just wanted to make that clear. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't go on a tangent. Not at all. No, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, Blockchain Backer, what do you think? What, what, what do you think about well, how yeah. they're feeling at the moment? Well, when it comes to, you know, we're just, this was a technical, just kind of bounce out it. My personal thoughts is still going to consolidate here for a little while. Um, but the thing that really attracted me to going to the wave of innovation is that um, in 2023, um, I spent the whole year trying to figure out what the heck happened in 2021. Um, because what we saw was an entirely different market in 2021. And what we saw was that only 17 from the top 100 assets uh, touched new all-time highs. And it became this big job for me in 2023 to be like, I'm going to figure out what the heck happened and why that was. <clears throat> because even the market inappropriately priced itself. We're talking like from the top 10 assets, only two of them do exceptionally well. Um, from the top, you know, move on to rank number 11 through number 20. Only two of them do exceptionally well move on to rank number 21 through 30. Again, it's two do exceptionally well. It's this consistent thing all the way down, the, all the way that ran down the top 100, that it's about 20% of these assets did well, which is an entirely different market from what we saw back in 2017. In 2017, nine out of the top 10, like you just found safety. It's like, hey, just go throw all your money at the top 10. The market has appropriately priced itself. It is set market caps appropriately. Just go buy the heck out of the top 10 and you're going to be glorious and right off into the sunset. And like the very first alt season that we had in the market when liquidity flood into the market in 2016 and 17, like the average return of that first alt season from the top 10 was 70x per each asset average was the return. And that's alt season number one. So like we're not even talking about alt season number two and the, the money flowing into the market. And that's nine out of 10 of them uh, flying. And the average out of all 10 was 70x. But then you move on to 2021, the average like from like a similar time period was 12x. And like, and obviously some of them did way better than that, where you had like B and B do better. Um, you know, you had Ethereum do better. I apologize. I have a TV on in the background. I'll turn this thing off. Um, and, and it just became, well, why? Like which, what, what was it about very specific assets that caused this to end up happening? And, and I just, I just spent 2023, like going to consensus and like watching the speaker panels and like some of like a lot of the speaker panels there, like it, they, I just, I didn't feel like they were really giving any type of alpha whatsoever. Um, and that's just because it's that type of event. There's, you know, f there's five stages and they're filling them with panelists at all times. And so it's just kind of like anybody and everybody gets on those things. Um, but then there was this one I really wanted to attend and I was actually standing there talking to the XRP cafe guys that and I was like, Hey, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, this is like the one, like the one that I came here for, like the one I wanted to go see. Um, and it was the electric capital company delivering, um, their de annual developer report and they were going through it and talking about developer activity and, and total developers on different chains. And I found it so fascinating 
um, that I like, I, I took their data, I went to their website, I took all their data because it's free. <laughs> and I went ahead and uh, started cross comparing and seeing different things going on in the market and like who was doing well, like who was a top contender in 2018, but utterly failed. One of them that's obvious is ERS. It was a massive anticipated thing to potentially even take over Ethereum. I had the third most developers on it. Um, it, it was doing the third most transaction volume, third most transactions. It was just a monster. Um, but then as time went by, it just never did anything. And it became like, well, where, where could we have like identified those problems that were happening underneath it that made it become one of the losers? And one of those things you can see in the developer report as the years go by, you can just see developers leaving. Developers leaving, developers leaving, less and less activity happening on those chains, on that chain. And we, you can see that when you start cross comparing, well, which ones had developer growth? Like which one was like attracting new developers? And those assets did well during the bull run. Which ones were losing developers? Those ones did poor during the bull run. And so um, I went through and cross-checked that, and then I, I finally got in touch with the sentiment guys because the sentiment guys give you more of like a, a clue onto what happens uh, in regards to monthly commits that are actually happening on chain and actual activity that's occurring on their developer activity, um, rather than actual total number of developers and whether there's actually developers coming or developers leaving. And and again, I went through and cross-checked all this data, and I was like, okay, let me take like the top twenty over here. Uh, for development, development activity, and how did they do in the bull run? And let's go compare that against the top 20 by market cap and compare that to how they did. And the ones with the higher development activity did three times better than the entire top 20 did. So take 20 assets that have the highest development activity and people working on them, and then take the top 20 assets by market cap three times better with the higher development activity group. And then you go, like, you cross-check other things. You check it, like, user activity levels, right? And you say, how do these guys do? Oh, my gosh, these guys do better. And it just all comes back to it of, like, developing, bringing users, increasing use, right? And so this was, it, it just, once all I had it compiled all this data by the end of this year, it was really uh, October, November, and December, once I started compiling all these things and putting these into newsletters and showing this and presenting the data and saying, like, it's blatantly obvious. That's why I said to myself, 2024 is going to be the year where I'm going to bring a lot of awareness to that XRP is ranked number 50 in regards to total number of developers, right? We're ranked in the top five for market cap, so we have a lot of eyes on us. We're ranked number 50 for total developers. When you look at sentiment and you look at total developer activity levels, right? Ranked 200, right? <laughs> 200. It's like, okay, <laughs> This is my goal of 2024. This is my project of 2024. My project of 2023 is to figure out what the heck happened. Well, what the heck happened was it's those chains that are having higher development activity and higher user activity. Those are the ones that do that tend to do better. 2024, all right, we're going to focus on that on XRP. We're going to make sure when that, these reports come out next year, we're higher up on those lists. Um, and we are seeing increased building. And there's going to be roadblocks, there's going to be pushback, there's going to be arguing and fighting, and there's going to be misconceptions, and there's going to be accusations, there's going to be all this stuff. It may be ugly for a minute, but this is just the path we have to go down to not continue doing the same thing and expecting a different result. These are the things that matter. The builders are the ones that matter. The development is the ones that matter. And that was the focus of this conference, and it fits perfectly with what's important for me in 2024, and that's why I am going. Hundred percent. The, the the I want to get into this a little bit more because this it, it's fantastic that you brought this up and it was it was so timely as well. Um, it definitely got a lot of people talking in the community, um, you know, about the data that you you definitely put together. Um, I mean, there's a community of because we're focusing on community, right? There's a community of devs, okay, developers that um, are flowing from you know one chain to another. Um, and they're, they're building over here and then they're going over there and they're building there and um, applying their skills and their talents. It's not like they're leaving the industry, right? Um, it's, you know, the, you're going to go from, you know, one job to another or something like this. And you're going to have other companies that are going to snatch people up and um, obviously get funding so they can bring more on. And I mean, like, what do you think is, is pushing these developers from one spot to another? Are they chasing the money or are they chasing the passion? 
Um, I, I know that you've probably got a lot to say on this as well, but I just kind of want to get your take, blockchain backer. What, what, what's pushing them from one to the other, do you think? Yeah, and that is the million dollar question. And that is the question that everybody is trying to solve right now. Everybody in our community appears to be in disagreement with it to finding the true root. And it becomes a, um, a cat and mouse game. It becomes a chicken or the egg game. Uh, which one comes first, right? Like when you think about it, what are builders, right? Builders are there to make money. Builders are not there to do charity work. And this is not what they are. That's not what any of us are. We are not professional charity workers, right? We all want to make money. It's part of life. And so like, what is the goal of what a builder is going to do? Either they're going to get paid to develop, right? They're going to get something, an incentive in order to be able to develop, or they're going to build something. They're going to build a product or a service that is going to make them money. And so if there's a product or a service that they're going to offer, they're going to look at that economy and say, is there an economy there? Uh, that would actively purchase my product or use my surface and care, right? And so we have a, an issue of not a tremendous amount of, of user activity level. And that may be why we don't have a lot of development activities. There's going to be a lot of argument. Well, there's no smart contract. Well, there's no incentives to do it. There's no foundations to pay for developers to do anything. And it's, it's a whole lot of back and forth that the community is really trying to solve right now. And, but it's, it's really trying to fix kind of both problems at the same time, figuring out how do you get users to actively participate and how do we create an incentive for builders to want to build? And when I say incentive, it, I'm not talking about when it comes to, you know, running nodes or um, protecting the ledger when David Schwartz talking about no incentives is the best incentive. How, how do these developers get incentivized? How do these um, builders get incentivized in whether or not there's a foundation or a fund that's providing them free money to do anything. Like we, we've looked at many, uh, many um, situations of that where that can be abused. People just get free money and they don't do anything with it. But many times just an incentive is that there's a, a positive business environment. There's an economy there uh, that wants to actively partake in the building that is happening. And so it, again, it's the chicken or the egg, right? Which one comes first? and trying to figure out kind of how to solve both of them at the exact same problem. Increase the user activity levels while providing valuable products and services, and the developers come when they feel that there is an incentive for them to do so. So it's a big mix of all of them, and the, economy, and the community is working really hard right now in lots of discussions like these to try to figure out how to solve those. Mm, so we've got these developers kind of moving from uh, flowing from one chain to another, and you know we're not really sure what, why the where the answer is at the moment. Uh, but maybe uh, Mel might be able. A to lot of these out. have foundations, right? So a lot of them do have foundations. Like if you look at Cardano, they offer t tremendous incentives for developers to come build. So it's a mix of both. It's it's going to be you know there's money to come develop. And then at the same time, is there an economy available there? Are there active users there and people moving there? And a lot, and like you said, a lot of these developers are multi-chain developers at the same time. And that's why um, the, if you haven't read the uh, developerreport.com, they put out a 200 page annual report. It is absolutely fascinating uh, to see, to, to really read about the dynamics of what the developers are. And I'm definitely not a developer professional, <laughs> like knowing all the <laughs> insights into it. I'm more of a yeah. data analyst and I look at the data and I say, Hey, this is what's happening. There's clearly a problem. And it, and it, it seems difficult because even in all these communities and all these uh, Twitter spaces, they get held those answers and those reasons why are all mixed. Everybody's kind of got a different answer on the reason why funding, right. Or not user activity levels. There's not participation. It's a mix of, of several things. And so it's going to be a, uh, it's solvable. Everything is solvable. And the first step is um, addressing it and trying to solve it and then executing it. And I, I think even having this conference and um, doing it in the name of developers and doing it in the name of builders um, and providing money like I, for them particularly, this, I think this is awesome. Hundred percent, and we've, like we've got the you know, vet up here is a, a, a <laughs> developer. <laughs> There's an inside joke. Um, 
But um, I do want to um, I, I do want to get uh, takes from Mel and Lip. So Mel, go first, and then Lip, and then um, I, I want to hear from Bet afterwards. Hello, BC Barker. Just a shout out to uh, I want to give a shout out to Lady K and uh, Crypto Queen, my boy Berserker, XRP Bags. They're down there. Um, uh, so I am a big fan of yours. I listen to you every morning. I bought your. Uh, more than 40 videos on how to learn about crypto. So, um, it, it, BC Backer, this question is for you. In, in a perfect world, how how would you get, like, if you could just drum up the money, like, who would you ask or what would be an ideal situation so that backers, uh, so that uh, builders and developers can get funded? That's the hardest part. So here's what, so what typically happens when some type of coin is created or something like that, there's typically a white paper and it designates coins in specific places. And so a foundation will get built and that foundation will have a specific amount of coins, say 15 or 20% and a certain amount goes to founder, a certain amount of it gets airdropped and it's used as marketing and all that stuff. So there's usually a lot set aside uh, that's actually for that purpose in the beginning. We don't have that here. Ripple has all of it, right? So there's no foundation with a, a tremendous amount of money uh, that is specifically set aside like many of these other chains do have. That's, a, that's one of the big, big challenges here. Ripple has all the money. So figuring out how do you come up with that, right? So we, we've talked about these in spaces too. Like a lot of the things are like, do you figuratively hold a gun to Ripple's head and said, fill up a DAO so the community can do it because you've got all the tokens, right? unlikely to work <laughs> it's just unlikely to work um or do you know you create your own DAO and try to get people to put money into it and like it's like oh well you know community puts all their own money in it like we're not we're all also not here to do charity like we're not here to throw our own money into it too but you know at the same time uh, that uh, somebody made a good point i think it was that you know there's other companies out there who might want to throw into it too places like uphold Right, bigger companies that want to be associated with that and contribute into some type of DAO. I think the big question is, you know, the amount of money that gets put into a DAO um, in order to uh, to support builders and support developers. Will it be enough? Um, will it be enough to do it? And um, will you be able to get projects past the finish line or not? Um, that's still all in debate. All, none of that has gotten to the finish line on what the correct answer is, and I don't know the correct answer for that. But those are some of the challenges that you have is that a lot of these other tokens and these coins and these projects have this spe these specific foundation set aside where the initial token distribution went to these foundations in order to fund development and encourage building. XRP does not have that. Ripple has 50% of the supply, right? So that's one of the big challenges we're facing currently right now. And what would be a good a good amount for a starting developer? Uh, just like so you know, I've I've opened my own businesses most of my life and uh, invested. And like, is that an avenue that that you guys as developers uh, will look into uh, to to get some kind of uh, funding on the side besides Ripple? What is your question? Um, so, as uh, me myself as an investor. Is, is that a possibility for somebody to fund your uh, developers' uh, uh, projects? And about how much money would that take? Would, would something, and we're just hypothetical, like in a perfect world, what would it take for you to be comfortable as, as someone as a builder or a developer? Yeah, so I, that's, a, that's a, million, a bajillion dollar question. It's a, I would have no clue what the real number would be. And, you know, it, it, money only goes so far. I know the expector guys, you know, it's taken millions of dollars for them to build what they've built out, right? And that's just one thing. And that's taken over a year. And so if you're looking at like, hey, we just want to build like another metaverse, or we just want to do another expector, or we just want to do um, another NFT exchange or something, like I have no idea how much each of those things cost. And then how much it is if we want to, as a community, you want to build out hundreds of them, right? Which is, I think, what you would really want to do when you look at, you know, other places. Like when I hear Charles Hoskinson talk, he's talking about like 10 million here, 20 million there, 30 million there. What do we want to allocate to this and that and this and that? Um, so I, 
it's probably quite a bit of money. <laughs> probably quite a bit. Good. Um, uh, no, thank thank uh, you for uh, taking my questions. And I don't know if it's a, a big issue. If you could add me to your DM, if you don't mind, and I can uh, maybe conversate with you a little bit later. Sure, man. Thank you. Um, thank you. Bye, everybody. Uh, thank you I do appreciate I got you, brother. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll follow you back right now so that way you can uh, hit me up. Um, I appreciate you guys all for coming. I got to go pick up my kids. Uh, I was supposed to be there eight minutes ago. And like a horrible father, I am not there yet. <laughs> so I just have to go back and home. get my kids. I have this image of your kids just kind of sitting there, like standing there, and it's like writing. And <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. I, I bought my kid. I bought my son a new RC race car today, too. And he's like totally into race cars, and I'm mean, I am going to win Dad of the Year award when he gets home. But at the beginning, it's probably gonna be like, uh, "Sorry, I'm late, kid." <laughs> but don't worry, it's okay. I got you a surprise. Blockchain Baker, well, thank uh, you for stopping by, and um, I look forward yeah. to meeting you on the Gold Coast um, at for the sure. XRP event. And um, yeah, have All a right. great day. All right, you guys too. Thank you for having me. I'll talk to you later.